Okay, on this After Hours with Richter, uh, I interviewed Abe Del Rio from MNBRT, Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team. Uh, he has a very successful blog talk radio show that's been on for many, many years. Now, Tammy Murray, my lovely, beautiful co-host here on this webcast, who's been with me from the very beginning, uh, she met me when I was a co-host for another blog talk show, Sharon Lee's Bigfoot Field Reporter blog talk show. And uh, at the time, in 2011, uh, it was pretty much just MNBRT and Sharon Lee's blog talk show. YouTube wasn't really getting big yet with uh, Google Plus and being able to broadcast uh, live video conferences yet. So the Bigfoot world pretty much depended on blog talk radio for free Bigfoot entertainment. And that's when I met Tammy Murray and she encouraged me to be my own man, create After Hours with Team Taser, which then collapsed and became After Hours with Richter. And here we are. And Tammy here got to meet Abe Del Rio in 2012. Yeah, I met him in Stillwell, Oklahoma at a Bigfoot conference here. And uh, he was a completely different person then. Unrecognizable compared to today. He looks so good. I'm so proud of him. He's had a weight loss journey for the past two years. And um, I'm gonna put up a couple photos of him here before and after. And wow, you know, quite a few of us in the Bigfoot world have gone off our asses, like Mark DeWirth and myself included, in going to the gym, hiking, exercising, getting Fitbit, eating better. So yeah, you know, Abe Del Rio, kudos, man. He went from not to hot. <laughs> He was cute then, too. Okay. He was adorable. Sure. <laughs> he had a great personality. <laughs> now he's got a great ass and a great personality. Hi. <laughs> I met a lot of great people there. It was uh, good times. I had my Bigfoot pendants for sale at a little table and uh, got to see a lot of stuff. It was one of my first Bigfoot conferences. Lots of fun. Cool. All right, well, let's get right into our interview with him. Welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Richter! What? Leave him alone! This shit is real. Now we got Richter go, and we're going to have to hear it about it all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming memes out there, and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. Thanks for dropping me like a snub. I'm not interested in believing in something. Either it's real or it's not. By your opinion that you are no kill, you are dooming the species to be extinct. They are what they are. It doesn't matter what we call them. Let's remove ourselves from them a little bit. And I think that's something that the Bigfoot community can actually learn a little bit from. I actually am trying to push the envelope of science here. When are we going to make a video, Richter? And I mean not an X-rated one. Dr. Todd, you've also been called the scoff dick. <laughs> yeah, well, had these creatures stood against a backdrop of trees, I probably never would have seen them. You can't talk about that. I can't. So you guys are going to bag a Bigfoot and get us a body. We're giving it uh, our best efforts. We thought that we had the holy grail of DNA. Our hero, Bob Gimlin's with us. Hello, is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hey, Richter, I've got a question for you. How does it feel to lose Bigfoot Bounty? Hmm. My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Richter he does put a lot of effort <laughs> into his costuming, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, by effort, if you mean bending over and picking up whatever's on the floor. My. Well, in my opinion, After Hours with Richter is the number one Bigfoot webcast. Uh, what's your name again? Oh. Don't piss Richter off. <laughs> Richter, behave. Hey, you're watching After Hours with Richter, the number one Bigfoot webcast. And I want to be talking to the dude who's the number one blog talk radio Bigfoot show, Abe Del Rio from the MNBRT, which is the Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team. Now, Abe has been doing this for quite a while, and uh, since 2001. And when he was 22 years old, in the state of Ohio, he was bluff charged by something big and scary. He didn't have a visual, but he definitely heard it. 
So we're gonna talk to Abe Del Rio, and uh, this is really exciting because we finally got to meet here at the Ohio Bigfoot Conference, the meeting of the best in the world of Bigfoot media. Abe Del Rio and Richter Riolo. Combined, we are Abe Del Riolo. How do you like those apples? <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right, Abe, all right, so. So, you know, just a correction. We started the Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team. I started back in 2001 with a friend uh, who also had shared a similar interest. But it wasn't until 2001 that we had our very first exhibition and I had that encounter of being blood charged or, or, or chased, whatever you want to call it. And how that, all that went down is that, you know, we started the Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team in 2000. 2001, we wanted to do and get out and explore. I uh, hope, preferably be in, in Minnesota, but seeing that with more recent activity was happening in the Ohio, um, at that time, we started to come all the way out here in Ohio. So we did so. Uh, we went to a county called Coshocton County, which is just a few counties away from here, uh, to a place called um, Wills Creek, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, and that's in Coshocton County. We uh, were here for, uh, I think, about eight days or so, and there's a general store in Wills Creek, and we told them what we were doing out here in our business, and they said, well, we can go check out this place called Sasquatch Valley. So we did so. Never thinking that we would have any luck or anything like that. Uh, there's three of us, me, the co-founder of my team, and an ex-team member. We go to where they pointed out on the map, we get down there, me and the ex-team member, we walk about 50 yards from the car, and the co-founder of my team, he stayed up at the car. So we, he's up at the car right here, and we had actually had to walk down a ways. Um, and walking down, away from the car and leaving him up at the car, him having a higher point of view, probably about 25 yards or so in the direction we were walking, we heard a tree limb or a tree itself being broke, which stopped us dead in our tracks. And we're like, whoa, kind of froze, 22 at that time, wet behind the ears, just finally, you know, getting out of the woods on our very first expedition. Stopped us on our tracks and we're like, what the heck was that? As soon as we stopped, we started hearing heavy bipedal footfalls. And we were like, whoa. Goosebumps, still, wow, goosebumps till this day, but from just telling the story. And we were just scared, frightened, just young, young, young in basically. So we hear these bipedal footprints, they're getting close to us. Um, my heartbeat's fine again. <laughs> and we're, we're freaked out, you know, we're kids. And we start running back towards the car. And I stop, I had a Polaroid camera on my neck. I stop, I flip it open, I focus on the sounds of the bipedal footprints where they're coming from within the woods. And I do that, focusing on, I hear the cold of my teams to him having a, po higher, a higher point of position, point of view, mind you, known him since high school. Hey, what are you doing? The thing's right behind you. Get going. I look back, his eyes are as white as saucers. His face is looking like he's seen a monster. I'm still hearing whatever's coming out of the woods, uh, getting closer. And I can tell it's getting closer from the leaves and the sticks that are stepping on and getting louder. So I'm like, oh my gosh. Close the camera, start catching up with the other guy, back towards the car. We hop in the car, co founder of my team, a lot of the guys know him, the big community is Squatchy. Um, he has a car started by the time, so he took his eyes off the creature. But when we got in the car, I'm giving him 20 questions. I'm like, dude, what was it? What it looked like? This, that, and the other thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was a big foot. Well, give me detail. I want the details. Um, reddish brown in color, seven to seven and a half feet tall and it's making its way like from tree to tree, getting up on us. <sighs> so, you know, we're breaking it down, you know, and we, where is it, where did it go? He took his eyes off of it, of course, to start the car up and have the car ready for us by the time we got there. We didn't know where it was, we started looking around. Everything is quiet, the woods is quiet at this time. And we get freaked out, we get the heck out of there. Looking back in hindsight, the substrate, the mud, the dirt, the earth, <laughs> I remember, Every step that I would take, it would accumulate to the bottom of my hiking route, which would, looking back, tell me that would have been prime condition to go back and look for any type of prints. Or yet, learn, learn the hard way, learn, learn from your mistakes, wet behind the ears. And so that was our very first encounter. I can say that I got blood charged or chased by a Bigfoot because it was confirmed from the co-founder of my team who actually got to see the creature. And then in 2009, 2009, I started created the MNBRT radio show. Log Talk Radio, yeah. right here. Yes, yes. I'm your host, Elusive One, founder of the Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team. 
Join me as I invite different people as my guests and try to get down to the bottom of this real mystery known as Bigfoot on MNBRT Radio. The Minnesota Bigfoot Research Team Radio Show is on the air. Join Elusive One for the latest news on Bigfoot and the ongoing search for the mysterious creature known as Bigfoot. This is a Bigfoot show by the common Bigfoot researcher for the common Bigfoot researcher. Now, here's Elusive One. And we are live. Today is Monday. Yes, and so... You're you, almost at 10 years. You've been doing this for eight, eight years. Eight years, yeah. Wow. Eight years of doing uh, the Bigfoot radio show. 17 years, uh, actually, this month. It was this month, in May, uh, when we had our, that, that encounter up in, in 2001. Um, the radio show has been a learning experience in itself. Um, but it, it's totally separate from the actually actually doing field research and investigations right. where you learn more from them over here. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> it gets every bit of you, but you can get the full shot too. There we go. Yeah. Now turn around. Well, stop. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it's fun. I mean, you're hearing all these people that you have on your guest has in, having their exciting their encounters, their thoughts, their theories, you know, everything like that. It's a learning experience in itself. Um, I'm over here. My eyes are up here. That's oh, right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was, see, I, I like to look at you and not the screen. Right. So that's why it kind of drifts off. Uh, you need a tripod. Yeah. That's right. I should right. have my tripod. <laughs> you touched my arm. No. Uh. <laughs> and then we could probably set this here. Yeah, I do that a lot too when I don't have a tripod. Thank you, both of us, uh, in the shot. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. How's your owie? It's, it's owie. Okay, I just wanted to ask. Um, <laughs> ooh, ooh! Look, look what MMBRT did to me! <laughs> oh, oh. B Channel, it's my first time here. He slipped on a rock. Dax, you're missing it. I'm showing him my boo boo. What? I'm showing him my boo boo. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you missed it. Oh, you know. hey, let, me put, let me put some cold meat on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't it's too low. It's too. <laughs> I'm interviewing him for my after hours. That's all. Oh, I need help. Oh, alcohol yeah, abuse. Need help. Alcohol abuse. Yeah, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> can you hold the camera? I can. Can you be quiet? I <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Can yeah. you be quiet? Okay. Yeah. We're, we're, Okay. Yeah, you want to do this? I'll film. Yeah. I'll film you. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause, cause I'm talking as I'm like, like, the camera's kind of right. like a lightsaber. Yep. Shut your trap. Shut your trap. All right. This will be it. <laughs> All right. You good? Mm -hmm. All right. And then when I talk, you come over to me and just go back to him. All right. I got you. Yeah. Get right in. Both of us get in frame. All right. Face the camera. Camera's this way. There you go. <laughs> You're uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> He's uncomfortable uh, now. Uh, when I do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, wait till he tucks you in. Yeah. <laughs> I just got goose. So, so you know, from doing the radio show. Oh, I did. Yeah, one, did you want to start out? So okay, so you started in two thousand nine. MMBRT, yeah. Blog Talk Radio. Yes. You've been doing this for almost ten years now. Mm. You're on your eighth year. Yes. You're taking a break. Come back. You know, which is good. Mm -hmm. It's good to kind of like recharge your batteries. Totally. Uh, you have seen the Bigfoot world change over the past eight years being on the internet. Then Facebook has come into play. I mean, Social media has came along. Right, you know, so it's helped all of us. It's helped MMRT. Network, networking, yes. Exactly, it's brought us, all, brought us all together. You've had multiple, multiple uh, eyewitnesses on MMRT and researchers, and you have done quite a bit for the Bigfoot world itself. Thank you. Long before I came into the picture. See, I was a fan of MMRT before I was um, subjected to uh, the Big Fulfill Reporter. Okay. When I joined on to that thing, I was like totally in, in your chat room and Henry made, yes. oh, there's Rick yes. Riolo. Because in 2012, I was putting out my Bigfoot artwork. Right. And so and then Cliff right. Berkman was putting it on his website and the Bigfoot world took notice of me then and then Sharon Lee took notice of me and put me on, you know, her show. Gotcha. And I was her co-host. Gotcha. You know, and then the rest of blah, blah, blah. But you were, you know, you were, there was also um, Bigfoot Tonight. 
or the Sasquatch Tonight? What was the one that Chuck Prawl was doing? Bigfoot Tonight. Was Bigfoot Tonight. Okay, Hollywood. I remember that show. Yeah. I heard a few of those, and then I heard yours, and I fell in love with your show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so um, he is the number one blog talk radio show right here. And I used to tell Sharon when I was with the field reporter, you could be great. Stop drinking. Drinking and posting and, and broadcasting doesn't mix. That's why I left. The, the big film report because you can't do that. And she, I was like, I told, used to tell her, Sharon, you could be better than Abe Del Rio, but it blew her feet off. Just, just shoot her feet off. And so I walked away from it. I, I absolved and created my own thing after hours of Team Taser, and that thing got like with everything in the Bigfoot world collapses. So I had to come up with something, and Tammy's like, do after hours with Richter. And when I did after hours with Richter. Then we started getting the really big names, like Meldrum, and then Matt Moneymaker. My God, we had Matt Moneymaker on the show. He doesn't do interviews. You know, it was, it was so then I kind of became into my own. But you came first. And I don't think I would be where I am today with my broadcasting if it weren't for you leading the way. Other people will but I introduced Richter to the Bigfoot world. Well, actually, Cliff Barrickman did. He deserves the credit. But when it comes to media, it was you and Henry May. Oh, thank you. Yeah, what? Well, I mean, I don't know if you remember me being in your chat room. I do, I do. You know, yep. you know and this is like a domino effect. Everything leads to this. Sure. And I've had researchers on, you've had researchers on your show. Um, you had all kinds of stories being shared on your on your show. Yes. Has there been <laughs> any that has made you raise your eyebrows and made you go, oh, or don't to say names, but have you had things where it's like, I can't believe you went this way, or, or you know, this is the one interview of my entire broadcast Bigfoot career. What has stand out for you? You know, you know, completely honest. There, as a doing the radio show, there you're gonna have. I've had a guest on that has made me raise my eyebrow. But the main thing is you gotta keep an open mind because when you, as soon as you close the door on something, you're closing the door on the conducting good research. You're shutting it out. You're shutting out the possibility. Um, everybody has a right to their opinion, and you know it, it's cool to hear other, other people's opinion. But yet, still, yeah, there's some far out claims. Yes, there's the portals. There's the this. There's, there's that. The other thing, but the portals is one that really come to mind. Um, there's the invisibility, you know, and stuff like that. I'm not saying that's not impossible. Though. We don't know what's impossible. What is possible with these creatures? Well, as soon as we close our minds, we're closing the door on conducting proper research, which that's what we're in this for, doing research, and keeping all the avenues open, and being open-minded to what is possible. Because if we know what these creatures do, then why we haven't we found them? Why ain't there more proof yet? But as soon as we become closed-minded, we start closing doors and shunning people uh, for their thoughts and their ideas, you know, hey, kind of like, you know, say, hey, that's not right. So well, we don't know what's right. So you haven't had an interview go, oh God, you haven't had that, you have never? Of course, yes, have, I really? have, no. I have, yes. But okay, so then, I, I have to keep all in mind, because if I'm not Have you caught yourself, mind. like, that's uh, I, interesting. I, <laughs> Continue, yeah, I mean, how do you? Yeah, well, yeah. And, and, and so, yeah, you just kind of, you gotta roll with it. You gotta yeah. roll with it, you gotta think of the questions that would interest them, what would they want to be asked. What, what do I want to learn more of? You know, how does that work? And what makes you think of that? What made you come right. to that conclusion? You know? Now, who's been your one, the one MNBRT interview that you would say, I would want God to see? What's the one crowning oh, Lord. episode? I, I, I can't I can't pick just one out. I've had so many, God's blessed me with so many great guests, from John Green to Bob Gilman to Melodum a few times, Cliff a few times. Uh, you know, it, 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 this is just, you know, I'm a, I'm, I don't put myself on a pedestal. I, no, I try but there's got to be one that you just, they're, they're I really, can't believe I got that guy. I'm, well, you got John Green. He's no longer here. No, no. You know? And if I could pick his brain again, I would love to be able to pick his brain again. Wow. Definitely. Um, it was truly a blessing to have Mr. Sasquatch on for the time that we did. And uh, I have the utmost respect for him being one of the four horses. Yeah. A big footery, so to speak, Sasquatch or whatever we are going to call it, but he, along with, uh, he's, yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely love to have him on again if I possibly could ever. Yeah. You know, Dax, he would have been great on Bigfoot Dummy. Oh, yeah. He would have been great. Absolutely. I, tur I turned it down. Oh, did they talk to you? Yeah. Mushrooms! Oh, cool.
<laughs> Weirdo, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> So uh, I'm going to ask Abe here, uh, what are his, some of his inspirations in regards to Sasquatch? Uh, why hasn't there been any proof been found yet? It'd be interesting to pick his brain on that. And uh, you know, what got him started? Because uh, he had his encounter after he created the MNBRT. Yep. Yeah, so, all right, so go You know, some of the people that inspire me are the honest to goodness people out there with boots on the ground doing field research. Um, ones that are slapping the mosquitoes, putting up with the biting flies, getting the leeches, the chiggers, the ticks. Those are the people that inspire me and heck, I've been through it myself. I can totally relate with the Common Bigfoot Research. I consider myself the Common Bigfoot Research. My show is about the Common Bigfoot Researchers and for the Common Bigfoot Researchers. You know, what got me interested in this and a lot of people who've heard me speak about this before is that the gorillas in St. Paul, Como Zoo. Uh, as a young kid, my mom and dad would take me to go see the gorillas and I'd just be so awestruck, scared, and fascinated, even at a young age. Um, when they wanted to go to a different part of the zoo, I would throw a fit. I'd, I could spend hours looking at a picture at, at gorillas from what they tell me. Um, and even till this day, as, a, as, a, as an adult, I love to spend time just looking at the gorillas and I think to myself, wow, you know, five to six feet tall, what a, just the way they're built. Right. It's like, ugh. Uh, I'm up here. <laughs> I've got the whole thing. I'm not going I'm just down kidding. there. I'm just kidding. Thank you. Is that uh, true what they say about gorillas? Yeah. Did you look down there at all? My. Um, it's just that thinking about them, what if they could, you know, actually walk on two feet or taller? They're just an amazing animal as they are right, right. now. Right, and you know there's been a lot of reports of them getting on all fours. Yeah. And booking it. Yes. You know? and as far as Bigfoots, yes. Right. You're right. And right. Potter Penhole. Yeah. Um, this whole, this whole thing, this whole subject is just, still I have that passion, still I'm fascinated, still there's fields in the fire, and when I'm out in the woods conducting my own research and investigations, I hear a whoop, I hear a knock, it's like, yeah, let's go, come on. <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. I love it, man. Why hasn't there been anything been found in the 50 years since the Patterson Gimlin film? What are we doing wrong? There has been things found. I think there has been a lot of things found. It's just that we don't have nothing to key it up to. Or compare it to um, everything that's coming back is, is coming back unknown primate or human. What's that tell you? Is it the missing link? You know, the skeletal remains. I think we've all heard about a lot of the theories mm -hmm. about that. They bury their dead. Mm -hmm. Nature takes care of its own. You know, so um, I'm right. I'm right along the same lines. You know. So you think there has been evidence found, but do you think there's a conspiracy keeping it hidden, keep, keeping it sequestered? Well, definitely. What? I mean, as far as governments know, I, I would definitely have to say, yeah, the government does know. Uh, that I have to agree with you, because Fish and Game, when I talked to them in the Sierras, yeah. they, they knew what was up, and they were very serious with me. Yeah. Because even though it's not a registered animal, if you shoot and kill it on national land, they can take it, because it's unregistered. Yeah. yeah. You know, and even with the Escamania County, Washington, the legislation that's gone to protect them if one does get shot or, or you know, right. being jailed or fined. Just got to read between the lines. Yeah. I, now, I do, do you think, so. I'm going to bring this up right here. Yeah, my Lord and Savior. Do you think this is probably one of the reasons why, if there's, there is a conspiracy, because if Bigfoot is real, and if it does have a language and is able to communicate mm -hmm. and is a primate like humans are considered to be primates. Scientifically speaking. Do you think that would challenge the Bible? Do you think it would have an effect on the church and religion? And then Bigfoot souls need to be saved. They need to learn the, the word of God and know that Jesus Christ is their savior too because they speak a language. Because missionaries go to foreign lands to spread the word of God, to teach the natives yeah. the word of Jesus Christ. Mormons go on missionaries. That's true. You know, so, so. So, with that being said, when I had Robert W. Morgan on the show, he brought up just that topic, um, is that it is being kept on the wraps, conspiracy-wise, for this factor. For because of this, because, it, 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 because it would of interfere with the religion. church. Yes, yep. You know, for me, personally, on a personal level, it, it, they, they have their own, a lot, a, lot, a lot of animals have their own way of communication. It be speech, it be. But these things are so close homes. to us. Yeah, it hits too close to home. You know, with that, yeah, and, and you're right. And a lot of people say about the Nephilim, this is Esau, uh, this, that, and the other thing. 
Yeah, but people interpret crazy shit from the Bible this, all the time. Well, I just did off the Richter with this gentleman, Jonathan Grummer, quoting things about the Jews and equating the Jews as to Bigfoot. And no. All right, so it's getting dark. It's getting late. We need to go in. It's kind of getting cold. And uh, we're going to end after hours uh, with this final thought. Abe, in our lifetime, will Bigfoot be proven? Time will tell. I can't say yes, I can't say no. You're hopeful. I am very hopeful. I am definitely hopeful. Chances... Oh, man. I, if I, someone I, proves Bigfoot's real, I hope it's this guy. Because <laughs> he'd make a lot of money. <laughs> Not even for the money. And he's got a really cute girlfriend, too. <laughs> no argument there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, well, um, well, thanks for doing time this, will tell. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for being on After Hours. This is Abe Del Riolo signing off. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Comment down below, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. And our next guest on After Hours will be Adam Davies, the cryptozoologist, author, and TV personality. He was recently on uh, Josh Gates' show on um, the Travel Channel, The Hunt for the Yeti. He's big time, and I love his accent. Yes, and he's a cool cat too. Awesome. It started to walk in. Into your bedroom? Into our bedroom. It was just big and hairy. From, I'm shaking. It walked in, and then from that point on, neither my twin or I can remember a single thing. Look. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Look, look what MMBRT did to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, people don't demand any proof of the blue bullshit. They just buy into it. You know, believe what you want. Believe what you want, run with it. Find your evidence, get what you're doing. Just don't be a dick. You're not so bad. No, don't tell people that. Oh, they, okay. need to, they need to fear me. He's a jerk. <laughs> I'm really harmless. I don't bite. I might bark, but I don't bite. No, you, you, have, no, you have no bite. <laughs> so you're on this BFRO expedition. Mm -hmm. Was it a Dr. Johnson? My first expedition. Of the dog, was, it, was that it? It was Dr. Johnson. That was when sanity still reigned. It doesn't uh, prove it's a Bigfoot, it just says now it's in a different suspicious category. Or you don't try to explain an unknown with another unknown. They don't need protection. They're doing much better than we are. You did. You can't pull it off, Richter. Try it again. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying, stop. man. Quit, stop. <laughs> I think it's very dangerous to profess Bigfoot's a magical being, and I'll tell you why. But Mr. Byrne here thinks I have a good young mind. <laughs> I said a good broad mind. A good broad mind. About a year ago, Dr. Jeff Meldrum called what the Bigfoot community perceived to be a hoaxer his colleague, Todd Standing. Oh, 